All right, we've made it to chapter 17. And we talk about chemical equilibrium now. So what the heck is equilibrium? Yeah, well, you're going to learn. All right, so we go through section one here. So first question, can a reaction go backwards? Yes, it can. I think I told you that before, but now you're seeing it for sure. Yes, we can have a reaction go backwards. As long as all the products are still around, um, a reaction could possibly be reversed. So if we have a reaction that is exothermic in the forward direction, then it's going to be endothermic going in the reverse direction. The big difference there as far as we're concerned, is like that activation energy is going to be very different for the forward and reverse reactions. And because the activation energy is going to be different, the rates of those reactions will be very, very different. And hey, speaking of rates, you know, is the rate of a chemical reaction constant? Right? So let's say I have a simple decomposition reaction here. So A making B, right? Rate law, rate equals rate constant times the concentration of A. So as A makes B, what happens to the concentration of A? It gets less and less and less, all right? If this gets less, what happens to the rate? It gets smaller. It gets slower, all right? So, yeah, it, it does change, all right? It's going to slow down as A gets used up. So, reactions always start off fast, and then they slow down. So, they're always at their very fastest right at the start. All right. Cool. How do you know I have an equilibrium system? You're going to see one of these things. All right, so what's going on in equilibrium? Um, if you see an equation, it's got one of these little double harpoony thing things harpoon is what those are called um that means you have an equilibrium system that means a b make c and d and c and d can make a and b so this is like my generic reaction so a moles of a like these little lowercase guys these are the coefficients and capital ones those are my compounds when we start the reaction like even like before we start the reaction let's let's go like really initially so super initially like there's no c and d at all because a and b haven't even touched each other yet there hasn't even been a single collision yet so the the concentration of a and b are at their maximum so when this thing does react that rate is going to be at its highest right but over time a and b the concentrations are going to drop they're going to get less and less they're going to get used up as i'm making c and d so that forward rate is going to be slowing down all right as i make c and d right as the concentrations of c and d go up the reverse reaction rate is going to keep speeding up because kind of going backwards here c and d are my reactants for the reverse reaction so what's going on here the the forward reaction is slowing down as those reactants get consumed the reverse reaction is speeding up as these products are being produced when the rates are equal Dun, dun, dun. that's equilibrium so this forward reaction is going to slow down this reverse reaction is going to speed up Boop, just like this all right and bam you get equilibrium when those rates are the same so what's going on is like every time a and b make c and d there's c and d making a and b they're going at the same exact rate what i don't want you guys to get confused with when you look at this this picture here this figure is the, the concentrations like this, this might make you think, oh, so I have equilibrium when I have equal amounts of A and B and C and D, because that's kind of looks like this picture. No, 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 definitely not. We can have equilibrium established when there's millions of times more reactant there, than there is product or vice versa, millions of times more product than reactant. So if we look at concentration over time for an equilibrium system, let's say I start with nitrogen and hydrogen and I'm gonna make some ammonia. So at the very start of this thing, I don't have any ammonia, it hasn't been made yet. But the nitrogen and the hydrogen, so here's my nitrogen down here, here's my hydrogen. Boop. They react, they start making some ammonia, but once you build up enough ammonia, that ammonia can break down into nitrogen and hydrogen, right? Boom, you hit equilibrium and the concentrations stop changing, right? The reaction's still going, right? But the concentrations are no longer changing. That's because every time nitrogen and hydrogen make ammonia, there's ammonia making nitrogen and hydrogen. All right, we call this a dynamic equilibrium. That's to like remind you that there is still something going on. So even though it looks like everything's flatlined, there is still something going on, all right? It, the reaction is still going. It's just forward and reverse reactions are going at the same exact rate. So that's what equilibrium is. I want just to really emphasize that. Equilibrium is when the forward rate equals the reverse rate, all right? Not concentrations of this, not coefficients, anything like that rates so when that forward reaction rate equals the reverse reaction rate that's when we've hit equilibrium we can have reactions that are far to the left like what does that mean so if my equilibrium position is far to the left that means i have formed very little product that means i have mostly re reactants 
in my mixture in a tiny amount of product, but the rates are equal, All right? We call that a, um, a reactant favored system. And if they're far to the right, all right, what's on the right side of an equation? The products, all right, so it's product favored. That means you have very, very little reactant left. All right, so the rates depend on the concentration. Let's get to all this stuff here. All right, generically, A moles of A, B moles of B, C moles of C, D moles of D. All right, so by definition, at equilibrium, the forward rate equals reverse rate. So you could write a rate law. So let's say that say this happens just like we, we have it written here. So the rate forward is going to equal some forward rate constant. Concentration of A raised up to the A. Concentration of B raised up to B. And then reverse rate. Like these are my reactants for the re reverse side. Can't talk. Um, all right, it's going to have its own rate constant. It's going to be very different from this one because the activation energy is different. Um, orientation factor could be different. Who knows? All sorts of stuff. But that's all lumped up inside of K. All right, but this one's going to be concentration of C raised up to C, concentration of D raised up to D. And again, at equilibrium, rate forward equals rate reverse. So that means that this equals this, all right? Boom, boom. Let's take all the constants and shove them on one side and take all the things that can change and put them on the other side. Boom, 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 like this. So K forward over K reverse equals C to the C, D to the D over A to the A and B to the B. Right. This is what we call the equilibrium constant expression, KEQ, capital K. All right, K stands for constant because chemists can't spell. This equilibrium constant, it's a capital K. It really is just the ratio of the forward and reverse rate constant. But it's a constant, right? It stays the same. It's just a, a ratio if it's products over reactants. So it's just a ratio. kind of gives you an idea of once equilibrium has been established, do you have mostly products? Do you have mostly reactants? Do you have roughly equal amounts of these things? All right. Keep on tearing through. All right. So this constant, it is independent of the initial concentrations. So I can start with a container that just, just has A and B in it. And A and B will react, they'll make C and D, and then C and D will react and make that, and then equilibrium will be established. All right? I can start this with a container of just C and D. All right? The C and D is going to make A and B, and it'll still hit equilibrium. I can have A, B, C, and D all in the same container. Whatever weird concentrations I want, it will still get to equilibrium, and that value of K stays the same for all these situations. It's kind of trippy. It's almost like it thinks. Kind of cool. Um, it does depend on the temperature. So if you change the temperature, like remember rates depend on temperature. So if you change the temperature, it will change the value of K. All right, the actual numerical value of K, we need to figure that out experimentally. So you can't just like look at it and go, oh, I know K is going to be 35 or something crazy like that. Um, let's keep on trucking here. If KEQ is small, it means the reactants are favored. I'll get more to this on the next slide. Um, if KEQ is large, that means you have product favored, right? Remember, it's just a ratio, right? Products over reactants. So that kind of makes sense, right? If KEQ is small, that means you have lots of this and not a lot of that. So it's reactant favored. Um, large value of KEQ over here, right? You have lots of products, not a lot of this. That's We say that the equilibrium lies to the right or to the left. So small KEQ, it lies to the left. Large KEQ, it lies to the right. And... One last thing here, um, only the concentrations, or sorry, only the, the concentrations of substances that can actually change are included in KEQ. So we don't put stuff into KEQ that, that doesn't change its concentration. God, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, pure solids and pure liquids are left out because they don't change their concentration. If you think of a pure solid, it really does have a concentration. There's a certain amount of matter in a, in a given volume. It's density. So density and molarity are actually pretty similar. Density is um, grams per liter, and molarity would be moles per liter, right? Even though it's not really a solution, it's just like one one solid thing. You can almost think of the density as being the concentration, and that doesn't change um, unless you change the temperature, right? And so we leave those out. So what I want you guys to like kind of pop in your head. Let me get back to this thing. Let me flip back a few sides. Woo! All right, so your KEQ, your equilibrium constant expression, it's products over reactants. The coefficients become exponents and solids and liquids don't go in. All right, I'm going to repeat that so many times, but I, I'll spare you on the video from doing that over and over again. But that's the chant, all right? Um, as far as, let's see, let's, let's say it lies to the left or to the right. What, how big or how small does KEQ have to be? If KEQ is less than one thousandth, right? 
that means we have mostly reactants, not a lot of products. So basically a little bit of this reacts, you make a tiny bit of this, but this, even though you only have a tiny amount, this concentration is high enough for that reverse reaction to have the same rate as the forward reaction. Remember, that's what equilibrium is, is when the rates are the same. So you don't have to have the same concentrations or the same amounts of, of things. It's the rates, all right? So something that has a small KEQ value, right, is reactant favored. And if your KEQ is over a thousand, that means you have mostly products. Right, that's over here. Let's keep on trucking along. All right, so your KEQ always has the same value at a given temperature, regardless of how much you started with. Cool. For a reaction at a given temperature, there are many equilibrium positions, but only one value of KEQ. So what's an equilibrium position? It's it's a set of equilibrium concentrations. So what does that mean? All right, let's go back to this. All right, so here's my equilibrium concentration expression, whatever, KEQ. Um, let's put a number in here. Let's say KEQ equals 100, right? How many different numbers can you put in here and have it equal 100? I mean, it's almost infinite, all right? These these exponents aren't going to be um, too, too crazy. Or, right? They're the coefficients from the balance equations. But in only certain concentrations, you can't have like no 5 million molar sodium chloride. So there's only certain legitimate values you can put in here. But it's almost infinite. There's so many different values you can put in here that would equal 100, all right? So every set of concentrations that equals your KEQ is called an equilibrium position. All right, I'm going to stop there. This is getting kind of long. All right, I'll catch you in the next one.